Morning, Rev. This morning, we're going to be looking at the story of the fall of the city of Jericho, which is a very well-known story in the Bible because it uh, it brings home the truth that nothing is impossible with God. It epitomizes um, the idea that God's means for accomplishing extraordinary things are very surprising. And so it makes us feel really encouraged. We go away thinking, wow, OK, maybe there is a way through. For the situations that we are facing that are causing us to scratch our head or that are breaking our heart or that are or that are making us sad we think do you know what maybe god just maybe god could do this and so let's turn together to joshua chapter six we're going to read um joshua six we're going to read the first seven verses and then we're going to pick up the story from verse 12 through to verse 21 so joshua six one to seven 12 to 21. Here we go. Now Jericho was shut up inside and outside because of the people of Israel. None went out and none came in. And the Lord said to Joshua, see, I have given Jericho into your hand with its king and mighty men of valor. You shall march around the city, all the men of war going around the city once. Thus shall you do for six days. Seven priests shall bear seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark. On the seventh day, you shall march around the city seven times. And the priests shall blow the trumpets. And when they make a long blast with the ram's horn, when you hear the sound of the trumpet, then all the people shall shout with a great shout and all and the wall of the city will fall down flat and the people shall go up everyone straight before him. So Joshua, the son of Nun, called the priests and said to them, take up the Ark of the Covenant and let seven priests bear seven trumpets of ram's horns before the Ark of the Lord. And he said to the people, go forward, march around the city and let the armed men pass on before the ark of the Lord. Verse 12. Then Joshua rose early in the morning and the priests took up the ark of the Lord and the seven priests bearing the seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark of the Lord walked on and they blew the trumpets continually and the armed men were walking before them and the rear guard was walking after the ark of the Lord while the trumpets blew continually. And the second day they marched around the city once and returned into the camp. So they did for six days. On the seventh day, they rose early at the dawn of day and marched around the city in the same manner seven times. It was only on that day that they marched around the city seven times. And at the seventh time, when the priests had blown the trumpets, Joshua said to the people, shout for the Lord has given you the city and the city and all that is in it shall be devoted to the Lord for destruction. Only Rahab the prostitute and all who are with her in her house shall live because she hid the messengers whom we sent. But you keep yourselves from the things devoted to destruction, lest when you have devoted them, you take away any of the devoted things and make the camp of Israel a thing for destruction and bring trouble upon it. But all silver and gold and every vessel of bronze and iron are holy to the Lord. They shall go into the treasury of the Lord. So the people shouted and the trumpets were blown. And as soon as the people heard the sound of the trumpet, the people shouted a great shout and the wall fell down flat. So that the people went up into the city, every man straight before him, and they captured the city. Then they devoted all in the city to destruction, both men and women, young and old, oxen, sheep and donkeys, with the edge of the sword. It's the word of God. We're going to do something a little bit unusual with this story today. There's a word used in the Bible called stronghold, and it's used in many different ways. Um... But the idea is pretty much always uh, the same. The idea is to do with safety. The idea is to do with hiding. And um, it could be to do with a particular geographical, um, geological landscape, a a particular rock. It could uh, could be a city. It could be uh, a tower within a city. This word is used in numbers of different ways. It's used even of God himself. The idea is is that if you're inside it, you're safe. You can hide inside it and you won't be harmed. And really in this story, even though the exact word isn't used, the concept is exactly used here, that, that Jericho is like a stronghold. No one goes in and no one goes out. It's impenetrable, really. Um, people inside it are scared. We know that. We know that they're scared because... Remember a few weeks back in our story with Rahab, she said to the spies, our hearts are melting. But nevertheless, it's a walled city. Not all cities were walled in those days. Um, some of them were, 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 were open, but this is a walled city. No one came out. No one went in. It was, a, it was a stronghold. It was a place where the people were hiding in order to try to stay 
safe. Now, as I was preparing this sermon, I was reminded of a passage in the New Testament that we're going to read together. Just just uh, three verses in the book of 2 Corinthians, Paul's second letter to the Corinthians, chapter 10. And we're going to read verses 3, 4 and 5. That's 2 Corinthians 10, verses 3, 4 and 5. He says this, he says, For though we walk in the flesh, we are not waging war according to the flesh. For though we walk in the flesh, sorry, for the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but have divine power to destroy strongholds. We destroy arguments and every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God and take every thought captive to obey Christ. How interesting. Paul's here, Paul here uses the word stronghold, but he's using it. It's clear as he goes as he goes onward. He's using it to talk about arguments, opinions and thoughts. And he's actually using them in a, using the idea in a negative way. He's saying that the, the, the weapons we use as Christian ministers, the, we, the weapons that we use as, as servants of God are powerful, powerful for destroying these strongholds, destroying areas in the mind um, where actually dark ideas and thoughts and things that aren't true and things that don't glorify God can kind of hide in your mind and, and, and think that they're safe and kind of exert influence and power over you. Um, Paul says, we wage warfare spiritually and our war the weapons that we use are powerful for pulling those things down which is really important because the bible says that we are transformed by the renewing of our minds so before you come to know jesus the bible describes our hearts as like hearts of stone not to say that someone can't be soft or compassionate who's not a believer not at all but in terms of towards god um, our heart doesn't beat towards god our hearts are dead towards god i'm not saying that people who aren't believers um don't have spiritual interest i'm not saying that for one moment but i'm saying that we're not alive to god until we until we uh, unite to jesus through faith until we put our trust in the crucified savior until we come to the cross christ crucified and and at that place there we lay down our our burden of sin and we and through faith take on his righteousness until we do that we're not alive to God. We can't. We don't have a real live relationship with Him. That miracle of salvation, faith in Jesus, makes us alive to God. And so, in that sense, our heart becomes soft. It beats for Him. That's what the Bible says. We're born again. But when we're born again and we're new creations, Hallelujah! We become children of God, and uh, that's an amazing gift of God. But then, then begins the process of transformation into the likeness of Jesus. God, the Bible says that it's God's desire to bring many sons to glory. He wants his children to come to glory, which means being made more and more like Jesus. This process of transformation. And it describes that as the renewing of our minds. That we really do live out of the way we think about life, the way we think about others, the way we think about ourselves. We live out of our attitudes, our perceptions, our values. And so our minds being renewed transforms us. And here in 2 Corinthians, Paul is saying we have these weapons that God has given us. And they're not they're not natural weapons like clubs, machetes, knives. It's not like that at all. We have these weapons that are divinely powerful. They are spiritually effective in, in addressing these areas of thinking. Where the, en the enemy in our mind kind of sets up these towers, these places to sort of hide in and try to exert authority from and try to dictate the way we think about life and, and the way we think about God, the way we think about others, the way we think about ourselves and tries to keep us really from being fr as fruitful as we could be. Tries to keep us from really entering into full enjoyment of all that Jesus has brought for us, full enjoyment of God's truth. There are these strongholds in our mind. And Paul says the weapons that we use are divinely powerful for pulling those things down um, so that we might be liberated in our thinking. Now, I want you to now rewind. We're going to transpose that idea onto Jericho. You've got this stronghold. Um, God has said to the people of Israel, this land is yours. I've given it to you. I've given you this city. It belongs to you. Similar to when we're born again, we belong to Jesus. But but there's still these battles that have to happen, these things that have to take place. 
Um, just because God says, you know, now you're mine, doesn't mean that every way that you think and approach life is in line with God's truth. There's a process that's taking place. And so very similar here, they're coming into the land. God says, it's yours. I've given it to you, but you've got to fight for it. There are things in the way. There are, there are, there are cities full of, you know, really bad, bad, uh, malevolent uh, practices, people doing the most outrageous things. We've got, we've got to deal, we've got to clear that out of the land. Um, so that the land once can can be can be cleansed and can enjoy. Uh, in, in, I don't know, the land's not obviously not uh, animate, um, but the, the personification is used. We we are, we are introduced to, to phrases like the land spewing out um, the inhabitants. So in somehow in, in some strange kind of way, you know, there's that sense in which even though the the land isn't animate, it, it, it the land knows. I don't know how to even the phraseology to use because the Bible uses phrases like, you know, the creation is longing, longing for 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 the sons of God to be revealed. So it will be liberated. There's there's something mysterious going on. But the land itself has been polluted by just the lifestyle of these people. And God's saying, you've got to you've got to just deal with this um, in order to really live in this land in a way that's righteous in a way that's upright, in a way that's just, in a way that's pure, uh, in a way that's really going to glorify him. So we've got this idea of strongholds. And I want us to think today, I want us to think um, really carefully as we look at this story about our own thought lives. Where are those strongholds? Where are those Jerichos? Where are those towers? Whether that's you individually, think about your household, you know, you may live by yourself, you may live with flatmates, you may live with family. Think about think about the overall way of thinking of your household, of your family. Think about the church. Think about Rev. The way, how do we think as a church? Do we think right? Is our thinking right? Is it glorifying to God? Is it, is it in line with his truth? And I think as we think about all those stages, there'll be things you think, oh gosh, I wish I didn't think like that. I wish, you know, but I can't seem to shift it. That's the nature of a stronghold. They're hard to shift. They're 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 impreg impregnable. They're impenetrable by their nature. How do we get in here? No way out. No no way. How do we get in? Their very nature is is that they are kind of entrenched, and there are these areas of thinking in us where where we we got God's plan is to really totally just liberate our thinking, so we really can trust Him as we all. So I want us to think about, well, let's look at this story. What happened? Well, here's really interesting what happened. For six days, the priests carried the ark, it's the presence of God, uh, around the city. They walked around it once a day for six days, continually blowing these trumpets, which, as we've looked at earlier, probably represents the voice of God. Because when they were at Sinai, um, when they first came out of Egypt and they and they've been delivered and, and they um, and they were, came into covenant as a people with God, there was this sound of a trumpet and it kind of represents the, the voice of God and does so throughout scripture. And there's and there's the army, you know, there's the, the, the there's the army. God is a warrior. There's that warrior side to God, not in a kind of um, not in a way that is destructive per se, but in a way that is destructive to anything that's destructive. Um, that's the warrior heart of God, that there's a zeal in God against anything that is that is fundamentally destructive. He will come against in war. So you've got. So just follow me here with this idea. Every day, once a day, this city, this stronghold is surrounded by the voice of God. It's surrounded by the presence of God. It's surrounded by the by the warrior nature of God. Here we go. Round, just round. And the people there in silence. Very interesting. I always in my mind imagined the people, it was the people walking around the city. If not, it's it's the it's the priests with the ark and some soldiers. The people are there, they're present, but they're not they're not walking around. It probably wouldn't have worked logistically, because no matter how big Jericho was, and it wasn't a huge, huge, um, two million people, that's gonna be a bit of a that's gonna be a bit of a pickle trying to get them doing a lap of Jericho once a day. But the people are there, they're present, but there's this there's this there's this march going around, around the whole city, circling the whole thing. Going around, bringing the voice of God, the presence of God, the warrior nature of God. And then when it comes to the final day, six times round, six times round. And then the people shout. And when the people shout, the walls come down. 
I found this to be a very vivid image as I've been thinking ab about this in terms of when we think about strongholds. How do I, how do I deal with this way of thinking that I know isn't godly? You tend to find really when it comes to bad thinking, there's numbers of, there's numbers of things it's rooted in. It can either be rooted in unbelief, because God loves faith, and so often the, the strongholds in our mind are rooted in unbelief, the opposite of which is faith, or it's rooted in fear the opposite of which is love, or rooted in despair, the opposite of which is hope. And so faith, hope and love, we're told are the, the three cornerstones really of the Christian life and our thinking. God wants to saturate our thinking with faith, with hope, with love. Faith, which is confidence in who he is, in what he's promised, in his power, in his goodness. Just real strong certainty in that, you know, hope that we are living as people. We know we've got a bright future. We don't look ahead at the future and, and our head goes down because we know that he has one eternal life for us. And that that eternal life begins now through having a relationship with him. We know that we are called to the greatest thing, which is love, loving God, knowing his love in our lives, loving him back, loving our neighbour, living in and for eternity in the presence of the God who is love face to face. These are the things that God wants to saturate our minds with. And, you know, so strongholds tend to be rooted in the opposite of those things, dark things, unbelief, fear, despair. And some of you can think, how, how do I deal with that? Well, let's, there's, there's lessons here. Surround. Go around. Look at these ways of thinking. And you're, you're, I'm so negative or, you know, I'm so kind of always doubting God or whatever it might be. OK, what does the word of God say? Trumpet. We're going to get the trumpet going around, going around. Med Malcolm did a great sermon on meditation a few weeks ago. I'm going to fill my mind with the words of God constantly. They're, they're blowing the trumpet the whole time around the city i am going to i'm going to fill my mind with with what god says not in a kind of weird overly mystical chanting not that but i'm going to meditate i'm going to drink deeply in scripture i'm going to learn about god and what he's like and let my mind be renewed and myself be transformed by that i'm going to i'm going to welcome the presence of god and i i, so I want to say lord here's here, here i am here's my mind here's my heart i welcome your presence Walk around my mind, <laughs> walk around and anything, anything that in any strongholds you find in there. Lord, have your way. Bring your word, bring your bring your truth into that. Lord, I welcome you as the warrior to um, to fight against anything in my thinking that's destructive. Anything that's going to lead to death and not life. Come Lord, I, I welcome you. And what we love about this story is you see that this just goes on. These. The, the, it's God goes round and God goes round. God's word, God's presence, God as warrior goes round and round. The final thing is the people shout. The final thing is, the, and when the people shout, rah, the stronghold falls down. What a moment. What a moment. And I want to encourage us today. There's no point just shouting. There's no point just making noise. Oh, the louder I pray, I'll, I'll get through. Or if I shout when I pray. No, 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 no. We get into God. We get into God. So, Lord, surround. Surround me. Lord, I want your word to just be constantly coming in and just washing over me. And, and, then, and there will be moments in that journey. Well, you know, God, you just know God's given you the breakthrough. You just know by the Holy Spirit. God, and you say, I'm, I'm not going to walk in that anymore. That's your moment. You rah, you shout. <clears throat> Spiritually speaking, those things, those things come down. Now, we know that until the end of our days in this age, we'll be battling different things. But the Bible talks about being transformed from one degree of glory to another, which means even though we will be battling in some way or another uh, up until the point of glory, it's not going around in circles, you know, it's progress. One degree of glory to another, one stronghold falling after another, one stronghold falling after another. But there's a wonderful picture here. It's very simple. Lord, I welcome you into my mind. Any strongholds, any ways of thinking that are out of line with you, that are not in line with your kingdom, surround, surround those ways of thinking. And then you say, Lord, I'm going to get into scriptures 
that I know are going to counteract that, that are going to speak truth into that. And I'm going to leave you again with this passage. Listen to what Paul says again. Now we've looked at this. He says, though we walk in the flesh, we are not waging war according to the flesh. The weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but have divine power to destroy strongholds. We destroy arguments and every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God and take every thought captive to obey Christ. We have the shield of faith. We have the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. We have the breastplate of righteousness. We have the shoes of the gospel. We have the helmet of salvation. We have the belt of truth. Brothers and sisters, let me encourage you. Let me encourage you that this story in the Old Testament is given to us as a picture, a picture of the, the uh, centrality of God's word, of God's presence and of God's warrior power, the centrality of all that the Lord wants to do in our lives to bring the victory to us. And as we allow his word to get in and to soak into us and to saturate our souls, I tell you those moments of shouting will come. Those moments of victory will come. Those moments of hallelujah will come and you'll know those strongholds are falling down. Jesus has won all of this for us at the cross. Every, every stronghold that tumbles down in our mind, every next step, next degree towards transformation is, all, is, is just the outworking of Christ crucified on our behalf, where he disarmed the rulers and the powers, he disarmed all the all the forces of darkness, so we can be we can die to our old selves and we can be resurrected to a new life in Jesus and know this great victory and this great glory. God bless you. Let's keep close to God together.